Good morning, you life. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads that are here joining us this morning. Let's stand and worship together. everyone this morning you can have a seat at this time
Amen. We want to say happy Father's Day to all the dads who are here with us this morning. And for those who are joining us online, we want to say happy Father's Day to you as well. But if you are here in person, we have a gift for every dad that's here today. It's a notebook, and there's different uh, scripture references on this notebook, on each notebook that gets handed out. We've got pens that go with them that have different scripture references on the pens as well. And you can use these a variety of different ways. I thought about this, and uh, they're just blank notebooks, but you could. Um, I even got the 9 o'clock sermon already started in mind. You can make this a sermon notebook. So you think about going through the book of First John like we did this spring. You could have a notebook full of your sermon series notes. You can make this a prayer journal. I love that idea. You can uh, make a, jot a date down, and when you start praying for something, and then when God delivers that prayer request, write the date next to it, and maybe something the Lord taught you as you waited on the Lord uh, for that prayer request. You can use this even just to jot your thoughts down, but whatever it is, this is our gift to you dads to use how you want. So if dads would stand for us today, we want to bless you with a gift. Let's give it up for our dads today. Would you stand? As our gifts are being handed out today, I want to read a few, uh, a couple of uh, scriptures this morning as I think about fatherhood. And Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7 says this, The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 6 says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their father. Such an incredible reality of the impact of fathers and then even grandfathers on their children and their children's children. And I think of Psalm chapter 68 where our Lord tells us that our father, our heavenly father, is the father to the fatherless. And so we recognize that on a day like Father's Day, it's a day of joy for so many. It also can be a day of heartache for so many. Some who have fathers that are with the Lord and not with us here. Um, some who grew up without knowing of their father. Um, or even those fathers who have uh, said goodbye to children. And they have children that are with the Lord. And so today we would encourage you, make sure you encourage someone that you're near. Uh, make sure you say hi. Make sure you lift up and encourage and empower somebody who's worshiping near you because there are excited hearts today. There are joyful hearts and there are heavy hearts today. And you'll have to excuse my voice. I did a wedding <clears throat> in Florida and I left my voice in Florida for some reason. I don't know what happened uh, just uh, on Friday. But um, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all who are here. And we're so thankful that you're worshiping with us today. Would you go to the Lord in prayer with me as we dedicate our service? Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here to worship you. Lord, we thank you for each and every father that's with us in person and for those who are joining us online. Lord, we pray that you would encourage every heart that's here this morning. Lift up and empower us, Lord, to live for you. Lord, we pray that those who have that great joy and excitement in their hearts this morning, I pray that you would bless them. Lord, I pray that their joy would be in overflow and would spill over, Lord, to those around us. Lord, for those who have heavy hearts this morning, I pray that you would encourage them, lift them up as only you can. Lord, we dedicate our service to you and we entrust this entire time to you, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us today as we continue to sing? Children grades one through five can meet their adult leaders in the back as well. Be dismissed. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me, you know, his love for me. Oh, his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free
While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died.
this morning as we go to the Lord for our offertory prayer today. And as a reminder, you can give one of three different ways. You can give in person in the receptacles in the lobby. You can give online at nlpositivefaith.com. Click on the giving links and follow those prompts. You can also give by mail to New Life Church, P.O. Box 228, Osceola, Indiana, 46561. Or you can mail to the physical church property. Uh, we've got in our mailbox moved, so that is a blessing. We're thankful for Glenn Taylor for taking care of that, but you can go to 11593 McKinley Highway East, Osceola, Indiana, 46561. But however you give, we're just thankful for the way you push our gospel ministry forward. This week, we have our teenagers headed to youth camp. We know God's gonna do great things in their lives and the lives of our leaders. And as we partner with churches around the state of Indiana, we know that God's gonna use uh, our, the influence of our teenagers on them as well. Jake, as he leads the camp band there at camp, it's going to be a, a wonderful thing. And then just a week from tomorrow kicks off our vacation Bible school. So there's a lot of things in play. And so we would encourage you to make sure that your children or grandchildren are connected and plugged into these endeavors. And as you give, just know that you're giving to those gospel ministry efforts there. And as we go to Lord in prayer this morning, I'm excited to have my dad preaching today for our Father's Day on this Father's Day. And as I've been going through the book of 1 John, as we've talked about how his charge was to like the third generation Christians and John uh, being kind of like the grandfather in the faith. And I think of my own dad in this endeavor. He grew up in a Christian home, but my dad always maintained a first generation conviction of the things of the Lord. And he that's how he infused us. And so when I think about founding this church many years ago and seeing the second generation come through, and now as we're watching some of the third generation come through, uh, I think of First John. I think of the way he was burdened for these uh, young people who now were taking the baton of the faith. And I think of my dad, and I'm so appreciative that he raised a lot of us out here. Uh, he's kind of like a spiritual father to so many. 
and he'll often say, now I think I'm the grandfather, I'm the, I'm the church grandpa now. And, uh, and that's wonderful and, and absolutely. And uh, so I'm thankful for the way he's modeled that first generation conviction in my life and to so many of us here. And I just wanna say happy Father's Day, Dad, to you as well. Let's give it up for my dad, Pastor Mike, this morning. Let's go to the Lord for our offering today. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give of our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we thank you for the way that you bless in each and every one of us. And Lord, the way you supply each and every one of us with our needs. And so Lord, I pray that as we give of our tithes and our offerings to you today, that you would bless both the gift and the giver. Lord, we pray that you'd use these resources here in this church, use them in our community. Lord, use them in our state as we think about camp next week. Take them around the world as you use them with our missionaries and church planters. And Lord, I just pray that you would further the gospel ministry through these efforts. Lord, we dedicate all these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, and if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, well, there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. And if you need freedom, or save it. He's a prison shaking sake of you got chains. He's a chain break. Search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. And we've all run to things we know just ain't right. Well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Thank you, praise team, and all God's people said. I mentioned in the first service, I want to say it again, 3 John in verse 4, the scripture says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And 
Cindy and I have four children, as you know. One is with the Lord, 13 grandchildren. And uh, Cindy doesn't look old enough to have 13 grandchildren, that's for sure. But it's certainly true that we have no greater joy than to know that our children walk in truth. And I want to say happy Father's Day to each and every one here. Certainly, uh, Pastor Michael, happy Father's Day to you. And it's such a, a delight to see uh, how God has raised you up and uh, just your ability to preach and teach the Word of God, your leadership. I had the joy of serving alongside you for a number of years. Now I get to serve under your leadership, and it's just a real blessing and an honor. And I think it would be okay to give a nice new life appreciation to your pastor. Can we do that? <laughs> Our subject this morning... Fathers lead like Christ followers. Fathers lead like Christ followers. Believers in Christ are commanded to follow Christ. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And love for Christ should be played out in our obedience to him. We're going to look at a biblical command this morning on this Father's Day, 2024, that is specifically for the fathers. The principle certainly applies to all, but on Father's Day, I wanted to craft and tailor a message that specifically applies to, for this particular occasion. You know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Scripture says, so that the man of God or the person of faith might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So all of the commands in Scripture are certainly commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. We're going to look at a specific command in the New Testament for fathers, for us as dads. And to be qualified to lead, we must first learn to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 6, 4, and I'm going to invite you to stand out of respect for the reading of the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. And you fathers, 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 and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, or do not exasperate them, your translation may say, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Your translation may say in the instruction, the discipline, and the instruction of the Lord. Dads, this is a specific command for us, you fathers, bring your children up. Do not provoke them to wrath, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. God places the spiritual leadership, the responsibility of the spiritual leadership of the family rests squarely on the shoulders of the Father. Now the psalm says that God will be a father to the fatherless. We recognize that that certainly takes place from time to time. And we recognize that sometimes there are single parent situations and the mother has to sort of pick up the reins. But here, as the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, is instructing the church at Ephesus. And he's giving some instruction on the home. He's bringing it now to the dads. 
He says, you fathers, do not exasperate your children, do not provoke them to wrath, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Father in heaven, speak to us now, we ask. Challenge us, motivate us, encourage each and every one that's here, inspire us, convict and comfort. Do your work among us, we pray, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Perhaps you are familiar with the uh, concept of the four stages that most children go through uh, with their father. One stage is the, to idolize. That happens many, many times when the children are small and, and they idolize dad and want to walk in his footsteps. Sometimes they'll even go into the closet, maybe come uh, walking out or wearing dad's shoes. They just want to be like dad. They idolize in every way. And, and I would just say to every dad here, if that's uh, where your children are at at this point in life, enjoy it. Then there's the phase, goes from idolize to demonize. That's when dad starts setting some rules and regulations, some loving limitations, some boundaries of blessing, if you will. And, uh, you know, not every child likes that, and sometimes we push back. And, and I was certainly the one in our home that would push back from time to time with my dad, and I learned that, uh, you know, if you were growing up in uh, Ross Kramer's home, his word was law. And uh, so you could try to push back, but it didn't get you too far. So you go from idolize to demonize. Then the third stage is to utilize. Eventually, the children realize, hey, dad's got some resources. I think it's time to utilize some of these resources. You know, uh, it's like that song by uh, the late Harry Chapin, The Cat's in the Cradle, uh, where the kid says, can I borrow the car keys? See you later. Let me have them, please, you know. Eventually, kids say, hey, dad's got some resources, whether it's the keys to the vehicle or whatever, some resources to help us accomplish some goals. So let, let's utilize this thing. Got college on the horizon. Let's utilize dad. And then the fourth stage, we go from idolize to demonize to utilize to humanize. Where we recognize that, hey, every dad is human. And I truly believe that most fathers do the best that they can with the information that we have. Uh, some dads had the opportunity to look to a positive role model. Others may not have, and you might be kind of feeling like you're kind of learning on the fly, so to speak. Uh, but either way, Ephesians 6.4 gives us some clear instruction on the responsibility and the role of the dad in the home. This is the Christian father. We're speaking to believers in this particular text. And so if you're taking notes, and I, hey, feel free to bust open that little notebook that you just got there. Hey, looky there, all right. Some of you guys are already at it. But first of all, I want you to write down the word faith. Build on the rock solid foundation. Build on the rock-solid foundation. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. You know the scripture well. Jesus said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, so not just listens, but does, I will liken him like a man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, No other foundation can be laid than that which is already laid, Jesus Christ. Dads, if we're going to have a faith that's built on a rock-solid foundation, it begins with faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and then a commitment, a surrender to following him in every aspect of our life. That rock-solid foundation. And it's no secret I grew up in a bricklayer's home, and my summers in high school and college were mixing mortar and carrying brick and, and so forth, uh, working for Daddy at his own cruise. But if I learned anything growing up in a bricklayer's home, I learned the importance of a foundation. 
everything rests on that foundation. We were reminded of that a year ago right here at New Life when we had to install some helical piers to strengthen the foundation and that was accomplished and so forth. But it's so much better if that foundation is poured correctly when you are building than to have to try to repair it later on. So I would say to every Christian dad, wherever you're at, just choose at this moment in time to say, I'm going to do with all within my power to build our home on the foundation of Jesus Christ. If you wait later on, it's not that the foundation cannot be repaired, but it's a lot more costly and a lot more time consuming. So get started early. Pastor Michael mentioned youth camps coming down the corner tomorrow. I'm not just coming down the corner, it's, it's here. And a vacation Bible school in a week, children's camp, uh, wonderful opportunities to just build into the lives of the students. Cindy and I have had the wonderful privilege of, of teaching uh, a seekers class every year for many, many years here, grades two through five, and, and help kids understand what it means to be a Christian, what it means to get baptized, and what it means to take communion. It's been our observation, whether we're directly involved in the teaching or observing uh, the midweek children's ministry or the Sunday morning ministry or camp or Bible school, whatever, it just seems like God places in the heart of a child a natural magnetism drawing for the things of the Lord. So I would say to every young family here, capitalize on where you are. Wherever you are at in life, build that faith on the right foundation. Now there's two key words here in verse four. He uses the word training, or your translation may say discipline. You fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training or the discipline. And it includes the idea of systematic uh, training children, including loving limitations, boundaries for blessings if you want, however you want to frame it. But think of, when you think of that word training, the word picture here is like an athlete in training. And think of the rigors that an athlete goes through when they are in training. There's uh, obviously exercise, uh, plenty of rest. There's certain foods they don't eat. There's certain foods they focus on because they are in training. They are in discipline. And God says that's what Christian dads have to think like. We must train, we must discipline, we must instruct our children in a systematic, structured way that's consistent over time. Teach them the things of the faith. Admonition, instruction, the idea of putting into mind the attitudes and actions. The idea in the uh, word admonition and training or discipline and instruction, the idea behind that is the idea of how what we believe should shape our behavior. And every New Testament letter that the Apostle Paul wrote really followed that pattern. And Ephesians is no different. He starts with great doctrine, chapters 1 through 3, but then he shifts into the duty of a Christian. Or you could say uh, what we believe, chapters 1 through 3, and then he begins to shift. How does this affect our behavior, how we live for Christ, both the attitudes and the actions? Go back to Proverbs chapter 4 real quick. Proverbs chapter 4. We see this as well. And of course, Proverbs was written like a, a father instructing a son. And you see wisdom personified all throughout the book of Proverbs. But at the beginning of verse 1, he says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not for, forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will be to you. The idea is God will bless. Wisdom and understanding. Doctrine is just teaching imparting the information. Wisdom is the correct application of the teaching of Scripture. And then understanding, 
Wisdom is sort of that general principle of applying the truth of Scripture. Understanding carries it a little step further, and it's that specific instruction for a specific purpose. Understanding how what we believe shapes our behavior. And the wisdom to carry it out. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. The same concept. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, verse 4, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Back to Ephesians 6. The idea... Deuteronomy 6, Proverbs 4, Ephesians 6, they really all tie together. The idea is taking the truth of Scripture, giving wisdom and understanding to help our family know how to live for Christ, our belief that shapes our behavior. In the musical, The Fiddler on the Roof, one of my favorite musicals, the father at one point says that they go through these different things for the purpose so that each one knows who God is and what God expects of them. Dad's if we can impart that kind of wisdom and understanding in the home, you've done a pretty good job. Who God is, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he expects from us to live a life of surrender to him. Secondly, affection. Bond with an abundance of love. Affection. Faith, build on the rock-solid foundation. Affection, bond with an abundance of love. In Ephesians 5, he gives some instructions to the dads, the husbands. He says, verse 25, husbands, love your wives. just as Christ loved the church, gave himself for it. This is an unconditional love. It's a sacrificial love. God demonstrates his own love toward us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's unconditional. It's sacrificial. It's sanctifying. Verse 26 and 27, he talks about teaching the word that they might have the washing of the water. Just as Christ presents a pure church, holy, distinct, set apart to serve the Lord. Steadfast, Christ never leaves. Whom he saves, he keeps. And secure, secure. That's why he says, husbands, love your wives. One of the most secure environments that we can provide for our home is a, is a mom and dad who love each other. And kids knowing that dad loves the family and loves his wife and loves his children. 1 Corinthians 13, 8, love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now by its faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Jesus said in John 13, a new commandment he gives to us, that we love one another. He goes on to say, by this all will know that we are his disciples, his followers, if we have love for one another. And that new command is a new dimension, a higher level of love. Unconditional, sacrificial, steadfast, secure, sanctifying. Thirdly, don't miss this, trust, affirm with honesty, loyalty, and integrity. I call honesty, loyalty, and integrity the triangle of trust. Every healthy relationship is built on trust. In his book, Winning Every Day, Lou Holtz has a chapter entitled, Can I Trust You? And he talks about the team has to be able to trust one another. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7 says, A wise man walks in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is to be treasured above great riches. 
loving favor over silver and gold. Oh, the name represents who we are. And so God is saying, dads, when we have honesty, loyalty, and integrity, that triangle of trust, you affirm that trust in the home. And every team, and a family is a team. Every team is built on trust. And I like to say in Scripture, we could consider it this way. The dad may be the head coach. The mom is the offensive and defensive coordinator, if you will, keeping that home in order. The children carry out the plays, but every professional team has an owner. And the Christian family is a professional team, and our owner is Jesus Christ. That's why the key is in Ephesians 5, 18, where he says, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, or be controlled with the Holy Spirit, putting a new driver at the wheel. And then in verse 21 of Ephesians 5, he says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. It's a husband and wife, surrender to one another under the lordship of Jesus Christ, controlled by the Holy Spirit of God is what makes it work. Now he says, fathers, do not provoke them to wrath or do not exasperate them. Jotted down a few things you might want to keep in mind as I thought about that this week. Some things that can frustrate, exasperate children. Favoritism. We've all seen that. Scripture's got several examples. Isaac favored Esau. Rebecca favored Jacob. Esau was the hunter. He was kind of the man's man. Dad was drawn to him. Jacob liked to cook at home with mom, and she was drawn to him. But as a result, they were at each other's throats. And then Jacob favored his son Joseph. You know the story, the coat of many colors. And as a result, the brothers were jealous. So be careful about favoritism. We love each one 100%. Perfectionism, expecting too much, and an unrealistic expectation. Overprotecting. Vicarious living. My goodness, we've all seen that. Dads reliving their lives through their kids. Abuse of any kind, obviously, goes without saying. These things exasperate. They provoke them. So we want to be careful in how we approach our family and demonstrate the love of Christ as a Christ follower. Fourth, heaven. Heaven. Live with eternity in view. Dads, keep the big picture in mind. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. Live with eternity in view. Pastor Michael mentioned that I grew up in a Christian home, and it's true, I, my parents were not perfect, but they loved the Lord. They did the best they could. They're with the Lord now. Cindy's parents are with the Lord. And, and to be honest with you, I, I do sort of feel a little bit like the, the church grandpa, and I love it. And our own grandkids call us grandpa and grandma, but so do the, some of the other children. That's, that's wonderful. Some of the ball players that I coached through the years still call me coach. I, I love it. But live with the big picture in mind. Live with eternity in view. Now you can take this for whatever it's worth. I'm just going to share with you one question that I never, and I mean never, asked my father on Saturday. Never. Dad, are we going to church tomorrow? There was no need. I knew the answer, even when we were on vacation. I never asked it on Sunday morning either. We were raised kind of old school. We woke up on Sunday mornings, and you could smell Sunday dinner in the oven. Mom had the roast and all that stuff. Cindy did the same thing. And spent the day together, worshiping our Lord, spending time as a family. I'm just telling you. I truly believe when it comes to affection in the home and so forth, that for children, I, I really believe love is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. Takes time. People talk about quality time, quantity time. Quality time is the byproduct of quantity time. 
You don't just sit down and say, okay, we're going to have a quality moment here. Those happen during quantity moments. Heaven, live with the big picture in mind. Encourage. Number five, inspire each heart with hope. The opposite of provoking to wrath, the opposite of exasperating, the opposite of producing resentment in the heart of the child is to encourage, to inspire with hope. You know, we use Hebrews 10.25 all the time for the body of believers, and rightfully so. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as some do, but exhort or encourage one another, and so much the more when you see the day approaching. That word encourage, inspire with courage, inspire with hope. Now abides faith, hope, and love. Hope has been described as oxygen for the soul. I like to consider it the momentum of life. When there's hope for the future, there's power in the present. Be a hope builder. Be that balcony dweller, not a basement dweller. Infuse massive amounts of hope in the family. Next, respect. Role model the golden rule. Role model the golden rule. That's all a part of not exasperating them. Not provoking them to wrath. You know Matthew 7, 12. Jesus said to treat others the way you would want to be treated. Respect. Give respect and you'll gain respect. I like to say respect is like a boomerang. What you send out is oftentimes what comes back. Respect. One more principle. Shepherd. Shepherd. Follow Christ and lead your family. There was a book out a number of years ago titled Dad's the Family Shepherd. A lot of truth there. Shepherd that family. Follow Christ and lead your family. And this is the top priority for dads. I'm talking to Christian fathers here. You fathers... Do not provoke your children to wrath. Do not exasperate them. But bring them up in the discipline, the rigors, the exercise, the discipline, and the instruction, imparting of the knowledge of Scripture, but also it includes the wisdom and instruction, the wisdom and understanding how to apply it, generally speaking, and then specific decisions along the way. I like to say we raise them to release them, but shepherd the flock. If we could have that final slide, I think you'll know where this message is going. It's an acrostic on the word fathers. Faith, build on a rock solid foundation. Affection. Bond with large amounts of love. Trust. Affirm with honesty, loyalty, and integrity. Heaven. Live with eternity in view. Dads, let's keep the big picture in mind. Encourage, inspire each heart with hope. Respect. Let us role model the golden rule. And then shepherd. Follow Christ and lead your family. God doesn't give us a pass on this. By the way, there's no mulligans. There's no do-overs. We get one shot. That's it. Fathers, lead like Christ Followers. That's where we get our cue. As you know, for the past four months, I've had the honor of helping a sister church uh, in New Haven, just on the east side of Fort Wayne near the Ohio border. First Baptist Church of New Haven, their pastor retired. And I've had the opportunity for four months to go down on Sundays and uh, combine all their adult Bible studies. And I teach some leadership biblical leadership principles that I've written through the years and sort of tailored it for those folks and then preached the morning service 
Then I meet with the leaders in the afternoon, help them uh, sift through resumes and, and just go over some other leadership principles. And I, I'm so delighted for these folks. Last Sunday, uh, they called a pastor. He'll begin July 1. I'll preach two more Sundays down there. But it's been a very, very rewarding experience. But each Sunday, leave home, and I'm so glad Cindy's now able to go with me, and uh, God's had his healing hand on her. But each Sunday, we leave, we live on the southeast side of Mishawaka, as you know, and uh, jump on Blackberry, go down to Dragoon, Dragoon to Dogwood. Everybody here know where Dogwood's at? All right, take Dogwood. I'm going south on Dogwood. And if you stay on Dogwood, that comes to US 6, and then you cross 6, you cross the railroad tracks, it runs you right into 331. That takes you straight to US 30, over to Fort Wayne, around to New Haven. I could do it blindfolded by now. <laughs> but I've made an observation. Every Sunday morning on Dogwood and 331, you have to be a little careful because there's some folks traveling a little slower than how we travel in the horse and buggy. And as I've been making this journey, when, when I come to a stop sign, especially if the horse and buggy is facing me, I can look right into the wagon. And we certainly respect those from that wing of the faith. And I'm not suggesting that you sell your car and buy a horse and buggy or not suggesting, ladies, you have to wear a bonnet. But we, we respect their approach to the Christian faith because they're certainly very, very dedicated. But I've made an observation over these four months, every Sunday morning. When I look into that Horse and buggy, the entire family is there. Mom's not taking one buggy in one direction, and dad taking another buggy in another direction. The entire family is in that buggy. The entire family, they are all headed for the same location. If you know anything about the Amish faith, they meet in churches, or excuse me, in homes. They have their church services in homes. And so it might be outside during the summer, it might be in the barn, but they gather together in various locations. A lot of times they meet every other week because obviously their travel is slower and so forth. But they also make an entire day out of it. They bring food, they have fellowship together. Uh, many years ago when I was in sales, I was in a lot of Amish homes, got to know uh, a lot of those folks very, very well, very sincere people. And then they might play a pickup game of softball or volleyball or a little bit of basketball, whatever. But I, I've noticed the entire family's in that buggy. They're all going to the same location and there's only one person in that buggy holding the reins. That's the father. The father's holding the reins. And it's so symbolic of fathers understanding their responsibility. It's so symbolic of Ephesians 6, 4. You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Top priority. And by the way, Ephesians was written in an absolute sports grace culture. Don't kid yourself on that one. Fathers, bring your children up in the discipline of and the instruction of the Lord. I would say to every dad here, if your hands are on the spiritual reins and you're leading your family, keep on keeping on. 
If you're not, time to pick it up. It's time to step to the plate. It's time to take the spiritual reins and lead the home. God expects us to do so. And I truly believe we'll see revival in America when Christian dads take Ephesians 6-4 to heart like we all know we need to and we want to. Just takes the discipline to follow through and lead our families spiritually. Fathers, lead like Christ followers. And all God's people said, let's bow for prayer, shall we? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I'm going to ask no one to be looking around. This is a very, very somber moment. This is a sacred moment. This is your opportunity to respond to God. Now, you're not responding to me. It's your opportunity to grapple with the Scripture, listen to the prompting of the Spirit of God, and respond accordingly. You can do it right where you sit. This is Father's Day. Let me ask you, Dad. Are your hands holding the spiritual reins of your family? Are you leading as a Christ follower? Or is the world dictating your schedule? The Apostle Paul doesn't say, check the winds of culture and see which way they're blowing. Under the Holy Spirit of God, the inspiration of God, he says, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up. The discipline, the instruction of the Lord, the nurture and the admonition, the training and admonition. There might be a father or two that just wants to write where you're at. Just take a moment, talk to the Lord. Say, God, from this point on, I want to lead my family as you've called me to do. Maybe there's some folks that need Christ as Savior. Hey, for everyone here and those that are joining us online, if you've never trusted Christ as Savior, that's where it all gets started. We can't lead as Christ followers unless we know Christ, Savior. If you need Jesus, would you pray this prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart? Dear God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose again for me. And Lord Jesus, I invite you to my life to be my personal Savior. Again, if you need Jesus, we invite you to pray this prayer. Just say, Dear God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose again for me. And Lord Jesus, I invite you to my life as my personal Savior. If you prayed that prayer this morning or maybe you reaffirmed your faith, if you did online, we'd love to hear from you. Those that are with us in person this morning, if you prayed to invite Christ in your life, would you slip up your hand and say, you know, Pastor Mike, I affirm my faith in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. All right. Christian dads, I wonder. It's just us and the Lord. If God spoke to your heart this morning, no one else looking around, just slip up your hand and say, you know, Pastor Mike, God, God touched my heart today. God, God, yes, God bless all of you. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can call you our Father. Lord, may every Christian dad lead like a Christ follower. And Lord, that includes me. Lord, forgive us when we fall short. Encourage us to keep on keeping on. And God, may the faith in Jesus Christ be passed to the next generation with great passion, urgency, and fervor. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Let's stand together. We're going to sing a great hymn of the faith in closing.
glad to be in church this morning. Would you give the Lord a praise offering today? <clears throat> Before we leave, turn to somebody and just wish them happy Father's yeah. Day. Say, good to see you. We're glad you're here. Something. Just greet somebody who's near you this morning. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> happy Father's Day. <laughs> Would you pray the benediction with us this morning mm. as we dismiss mm. out of Psalm 103, yeah. 17 and 18. Mm. But the mercy, mercy of, of the, the Lord, Lord is from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his, his righteousness, righteousness to his children's children, children. Amen. to such as keep Amen. his covenant Amen. and to, to those, those who remember, remember his commandments, commandments to do them. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed God this bless morning. You.